Okay, I've done videos on closures before, but I want to talk about closures specifically within the context of loops. So we've got four loops, four each loops, and the way the closure gets created can, or not created, can lead to some unexpected results. So I want to go through this to make sure that this concept is really, really clear. What I have here is an array called names. Inside this array, I've got six names and I'm going to loop through it. And what I want to do is I want to write out each of the names as I'm going through the loop. And then I also want to uh, create something that's asynchronous. So my function looper here is the one that I'm going to be calling. I'm going to call it from inside of a for each loop. I'm going to call it from inside of a for loop using let to declare my variable and inside of a for loop using var to declare my counter variable. This function is going to call set timeout. This is what creates the asynchronous portion of this. Set timeout means the code and its variables, whatever you're using inside of here, gets set aside and called on later. So we are referencing at some point in the future the values of index and item that are being passed in here. So item, index, and array. I'm passing in those three values to this function right here. This is where I'm going to be writing out the value as I'm going through the loop. So as I go through for each, I call looper. This line right here is going to be written out. Then I do the with let and var for the for loop. And then these ones right here will be called out. So as soon as it runs, as it go through the loop, these are going to be called the set timeout. That's the thing that's going to be happening in the future. So that's the asynchronous part. So let's run it once just to see what we get. All right, so at the top here in black, this is the list right here of all the values being written out as we're going through the loop. And then below that, these values, Bob, Tina, Jean, in green, these are the ones that are being called by the set timeout. So it's this function right here being called at some point in the future. So. I'm taking the index number that's being passed in. This is the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, multiplying each of them by a thousand. So one second in the future, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds into the future, this function gets called. And that's what we're displaying down here. If we clear it and run it again, you can see there's the one second, the two second, the three second, and so on. So the values of the variables, that's what I want to focus on right here. This 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this works currently and in the future. And that is because with every one of these versions, we are creating a closure. We're calling this function and we're passing a copy down here for these variables. So these variables, the values, the primitives, so the values are being passed over here. And then this will use these ones right here. So we have a function inside of a function and it's using variables that are declared outside of its scope. So its item is declared here, and it's used right here. That's the closure being created. So the function inside the function, using a variable, declared outside of its scope, because it was passed from here down to here. And the same thing goes inside the for loop. Whether we use var or let doesn't matter. We're taking the value at that moment in time. We're passing it down to the looper function. The closure gets created. So we're all good to go. When this fails, when closures fail, that's what I have down here, the example where it's going to fail for us. So I'll clear this off, run it again. So the green letters here, one, two, three, four, five, with Tina, Jean, Mort, Louise, and Ollie, those ones are functioning just fine because those are the ones that were being called from up above. Now, here, I'm not calling the function. I'm not passing it over to looper. So that's what was creating the closure, was when I was passing the value into looper and then using it inside of here. This is my closure. If all I do is do a set timeout, I'm taking this and I'm setting it aside to be called later on. But this is the variable right here, this i that's being passed in. That's the value that I'm using. Now with var, it's not block scoped. This is going to be globally scoped inside of this piece of code. So in the future, 
where this gets called, what ends up happening is this. 6. This is the value for i, because the global variable doesn't get destroyed when the for loop is finished. So it goes through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then in the future, when this function runs, the value of i already existed. We don't have it inside this function, so it goes up a level in scope. It goes to the global scope, and in the global scope, i has reached the value of 6. So that's what we have written right here. Now, if you want to do this, if you want to do some asynchronous code and you want to have that work, you want to create the closure, so you want to use the value of i at the moment where you're creating this, there's a couple of ways you can fix it. One is like this. So inside the set timeout, instead of just writing function like we have right here, we will wrap it in a set of parentheses and call the bind method. Names becomes the context for the keyword this, which we're using right here, and I, this is being passed in. So we're taking this variable, which is global scope, but we're passing it into the function I, and it goes into right here. Sorry, I'm just going to close the window for the, those alarms. We have this variable num, which is accepting the value of i. This is a brand new variable declared inside the function. It's scoped locally inside this function. So the value of i is being passed into num. Now we have a snapshot of the value of i to be used at some point in the future. And then the alternative way of doing it is just like this. So we're calling the function inside the set timeout, just like we did above. But instead of calling bind, we wrap it inside parentheses. And then right here, I'm saying I'm going to pass the value of i into the function. This is another thing you can do with all set timeouts. You can pass values into the functions that are going to become called by just appending them as extra arguments right here. So this i, there'll be a snapshot of the value of i here, which goes in to the value of num, and then it can be used inside the function. Now, you'll notice that I used var in both cases. If you use let, what happens is let only exists inside the scope of this for loop. So if I use let, I wouldn't have a problem here. This would work just fine because the value of i doesn't get held over it's not going to exist in the future, so a closure has to be created around that value at this point in time. All right, so that is closures with loops. I hope that helps clear up some of the confusion, and uh, this is something that you are going to require. It is, at some point, going to cause you a problem, so please do everything you can to really make sure that you understand the concept of closures. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.